Welcome to another trip down the Bourbon Road with your hosts, Jim and Mike. So grab a glass of your favorite bourbon and kick back. Well, you know who likes to give back to their community? is one of our sponsors, Jim, Chris Cruz from Cruz Customs Flags. He does custom flags out of bourbon barrels. Not only does that he do that, but he's also using veterans to build those flags with. I've got one right behind me, Jim. I know you got one on your bar. Beautifully handcrafted, repurposing a bourbon barrel, uh, not throwing it away, not making it into smoking chips, making a piece of Americana, right? It's something that'll last uh, probably quite a few years longer than a bourbon barrel would, right? Not only that, but he's using veterans to build those uh, pieces of art with. You know, you got to love that. But he's also giving back to his community at all times, helping veterans out like ourselves. Um, he is really in tune to that. Go check his site out, uh, cruisecustomsflags.com. You can buy his flags on there, key holders. Heck, Jim's got some of uh, these neat little cups that are charred inside made out of oak that you can put a cocktail in. They call those the whiskey grail, don't they? Yeah, that is, it kind of reminds you, you know, when you think of a grail, but truly a whiskey grail right there. Go check those out at Cruise Customs Flags, purchased from this guy, veteran-owned, veteran-operated, making a veteran-built product. Hello, everybody. I'm Jim Shannon. And I'm Mike Hyatt. This is The Bourbon Road. And today, Mike, we get a chance to review a bottle on this Craft Distillery Monday that is... Certainly not from a craft distillery. It's also a bottle that people kind of wait for a few times a year. Uh, what do we have in our glass? So, well, we got one of the men that started a craft distillery back in the 1700s, though. Uh, but we have Elijah Craig Barrel Proof C922. So this is the last batch of 2022 from Heaven Hill on this Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Comes in a 124.8 proof, Jim, and it's, as usual, 12 years old. Well, we know that we're getting ready to, to, to sample a bit of a flavor bomb, but each one of these releases tends to be just a little bit different. And let's take a second and talk about the batch numbers because they're kind of unique. They do um, an A, a B, and a C release every year. A is the first release of the year, B is second, and C is third. So today we're drinking C922, which is batch the third batch of the year. The nine stands for the month in which it's released, which is September. So this is September and then 22, 2022. So batch three of September 2022. <clears throat> like you said, this is 124.8 proof. It is a 12-year-old. Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, well aged, and a beautiful bottle with that wonderful barrel proof neck label that goes around the neck. Yeah, that's it's it's pretty special, and it, it comes from a you know the guy's name that's on it, Elijah Craig. He was a Baptist preacher. Um, he he was all kinds. He did all kinds of stuff, Jim. But uh, you know, it, it took him a while. He started out in Virginia. It took him a while to migrate to Kentucky. Around 1781, he made his way to to Kentucky. Um, it was, was kind of neat that, you know, it, he just didn't rush right here. You know, he was a, a preacher there. He started a school here. He actually donated land where uh, Georgetown College is, is today. Um, he actually started his distillery in Fayette County, not Bourbon County, which some people had claimed um, back in 1789. So you're going to see that 1789 on that label, right, Jim? That's right. So that's a raised, kind of a raised glass, embossed glass, the 1789 on it. Everything else is printed on the bottle except for the barrel-proof sticker. Yeah, this bottle is that got that wide shape, but it's skinny. You know, it's it, it's got those big hips on it, but it's it's skinny in the front. You know, and they really don't have any back either. So it's kind of one of those flat bottles that's that's a little bit wider. Nice looking bottle and stuff. Um, 2013 is when they came out with the Elijah Craig barrel proof and they took that 12 year off of the batch proof, right? 
Yeah, so um, it was kind of a process that went over about three years. So in 2013, they introduced the barrel proof where these bottles were released at, you know, barrel proof. And then in 2016, three years later, they announced that they would pull the the age statement off the small batch, uh, 12 year, and it would no longer be age stated. And that's what we have today, even in the in the small batch bottle, is a mixture of eight and twelve year bourbons. And they had to do that in 2016 to extend their stocks because uh, you know they didn't have enough inventory to meet demand. But they did give us this barrel proof, and they've been pretty good about making sure it gets issued three times a year. And every single batch they release is a little bit different than the last. Now, listeners, you can find these bottles for srp for around 69.99 now a lot of liquor stores going to upcharge for this this is a limited release um so you know you see one of these bottles you see it at that price you better grab it absolutely true uncut straight from the barrel without chill filtration says it right on the bottle you might even find a a piece of char in here i I, I might say might have think so jim well i've never seen one but it might happen it might happen (laughs) Well, heck, I say we've been talking long enough. Let's go ahead and give this sucker a review. All right, let's check it out. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, you gotta you, you can't go right in full full bore and take a big whiff of it, can you? No, nah, it'll it'll uh I got some nose hair, so it'll send some suckers right off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got a little bit of ethanol in the nose. It's got a lot going on though, doesn't it? Yeah, very complex, that dark, rich nose, that sorghum molasses we always talk about, that oak, a little bit of tobacco in there, letting you know, hey, I'm a bourbon. Um, That little bit of quick, a little bit of uh, sweetness in there from that dark caramel. You ever had one of those cow tails, Jim? I have had cow tails. Get that little little cream center. Yeah, I get a little bit of that chocolate with cream center in here. Man, it, it's you could go on and on about this bourbon and its nose and and how rich it is uh, and how complex. Like we we've always said about all the batches, um, they're doing something magical down there. At yeah, Hill. it's 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 definitely got a great nose to it. You get the the sense that this is a an extra aged bourbon, but it's not it's not like deep rickhouse aromas. It's not like overly aged. It's not overly oaked. It's it's kind of sitting still in that sweet spot. Uh, it does have a nice uh, sort of caramel. It lacks a little bit on the vanilla, though, for me, but um, it does have a nice caramel nose. I am getting a little bit of cherry on this one, actually getting quite a bit of cherry on this one, but I can't help but notice those typical almond pecan nose that you get uh, kind of on a, on a Heaven Hill whiskey. Um, for me, it's a little bit more of a, like a bourbon soaked pecan, you know, like yeah, uh, could, you might get, like you might get on a bourbon ball. Well, you know, our good friends over there at uh, Barrel Proof, you know, smoke your bourbon. Those ladies, they make some of those uh, bourbon pecans smoked, and I, oh yeah, I get that little bit of that right there in that nose, Jim. You, uh-huh. I mean, yeah. you hit it spot on. Well, let's taste it, Mike. Cheers. Cheers. Wow, it definitely is. Uh, a powerful whiskey. It's got a lot of uh, sort of that mid palate burn to it. You think that's a mid palate burn, or is that that Kentucky Wildcat getting a hold of the tongue right there? <laughs> I mean, hey, shout out to you, Kentucky fans. Uh, your football team uh, beat Florida this this weekend, past weekend. Uh, congratulations to you! But I think that Kentucky Wildcat is trapped inside this bottle, Jim. <laughs> Yeah, it's a powerful whiskey. Remember, it's uh, 124 proof. That's right up there. Now, they've certainly had some up in the hazmat range. Uh, this is a, a pretty decent proof. I will say it it drinks a little hot for me, but um, I love that that note of cherry that it has. I don't know if you're getting it, Mike, but it definitely is like a bourbon soaked cherries, kind of a mixture of bourbon soaked cherries and bourbon soaked pecans. A uh, little bit of that caramel. I get something else there, 
like a little bit of ginger, like ginger, caramel, pecan, a little bit of cherry. It's got a lot going on. Really good. Yeah, I, I, I get the cherries, but I think uh, maybe some cherry pie filling with some cinnamon on it is what I get. Real heavy cinnamon. Um, that that dark, rich cherry pie you'd get. Um, maybe even a if you've ever had a fried pie that had cherry in it, um, if they had cinnamon all over it, that would be this right here. It, it's got a creaminess to it. Even though I said it has so much spice and it has that wildcat, um, it has a creaminess to it. It's got layer upon layer, and it just coats your tongue, doesn't it? It does. It really does. Mike, did you used to eat those uh, those packaged fries, fried pies when you were a kid? Heck, I still eat them today every once in a while. <laughs> Do you? I mean, they're like they're like three thousand calories each, right? <laughs> I look like a I look like a cow with my tongue getting out, and I try to get all the filling out first. <laughs> now that's a sight to see. I try to eat them in private so nobody sees me do that. But uh, yeah. That's what I love about bourbon jam. It brings back great memories and uh, great memories of food. Um, it just, it, it's so great. Uh, we just went to a wedding this past weekend and I ate a cupcake. Um, and it was a chocolate cupcake with cream filling on top or cream icing on top. You know, it was real fluffy and stuff. And while I'm eating that, I was almost going to give that cupcake a review because I was like, man, this tastes like some bourbon right here. Um, and I almost thought about taking some, uh, bourbon and pouring over that cupcake just a little bit, you know, yeah. I had to look around see who was looking, but it, tell me that wasn't tasted good. Oh, then definitely without a doubt. This, this mic is not as sweet as some other ECBPs I've had, right? Elijah Craig barrel proofs. This one's, I'm not going to call it dry. But I'm going to definitely say it's drier than some earlier releases. And it's not as sweet as some other ones that have, I've had recently. I, I'm, I think you're right a spot on there on, on the back end. It's not drying, but it's really oaky. Um, and maybe that's that drying I'm getting, that oak, oakiness I'm getting. Um, yeah. A little bit maybe earthiness is, is what I'm looking for there. But still... Um, I, I still get the sweetness, but like you said, not as sweet as some of the other ones. Yeah. Um, that pecan, I, I hate to keep going back to that pecan, um, but it does have that pecan taste to it. A little bit of bitterness, a little bit of drying. Um, but you know, inside of a candied pecan is like that. Well, um, I tell you, whenever I make, whenever I make bourbon balls, I always soak my pecans in, um, in bourbon and I, ne it, it never fails after I'm done making all the bourbon balls and all the boo-boos. Cause I make a lot of boo-boos. I always have like a cup of these bourbon soaked pecans left over at the end. And I don't know what I'm going to do with them. So I just munch on them a little bit here and there. And that's, that's right. That, that, that's what I'm tasting right now. You know, bourbon soaked I pecans. Get, I do get a little bit of uh ginger, like you said, Jim, um, a little bit of ginger snap cookie, though. Yeah. Um, you know, ginger snap cookies aren't overly sweet sometimes, and they can get a little bite to them. Um, so you, you better have a glass of milk around when you're eating them. Um, that spice sometimes can overwhelm you. But that's what I get. Not heavy ginger, but enough to let you know, hey, this has got ginger in it. Yeah. I'm going to say if you've had an Elijah Craig barrel proof in the past, you've noticed that once in a while you get one that really lights you up and shows its proof, right? It really lights you up and says, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm barrel proof. Dang it. <laughs> this is one of them. This is one of them that lets you know real quick. It's a barrel proof. I was going to say, hold on a second, Jim. Um, that wildcat has done crawled its way down my throat and is, uh, tearing, tearing me up. This <laughs> hug on this sucker is powerful. Yeah, like I said, it's 124.8 proof, not the highest proof ever on one of these, but this sucker's got some bite to it, folks. It I'm telling you, it. Some bourbons drink hotter than what they say. I would assume this thing's right up there at 130 something, not 124.4. But yeah, it it drinks <laughs> like a barrel proof. It lets you know right away. 
uh, that it's uh, it's in charge of your palate because <laughs> it takes over. <laughs> um, but you know, hey, Elijah Craig barrel proofs are all over the map. They come out; they're different every time. Uh, but you know, there's always been that group of them that drink pretty hot, and this is certainly one of them. This one uh, a little bit drying on the back of the palate, uh, almost to the point of being almost tart. Right, yep. not quite, but almost tart. But up front, you get that cherry and that pecan and a little bit of that ginger. Uh, it does get peppery on the back end. It definitely you feel that alcohol, that ethanol. You feel that burn all the way through. Uh, it does present a lot of different notes, uh, but it's overall it's a very powerful and bold bourbon. It's the finish is sticking with me. And for that, I got to say, it's got a long finish, Jim. It is the sweetness is sticking there, the pepper sticking there, that hug sticking with me. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to give this a long finish on this. Um, I love it. Um, yeah. This is definitely not, as you always say, a session whiskey. This is not a session whiskey, folks. This, yeah, I don't, don't think don't, you can sit down and have a whole lot of this. Yeah. Don't sit down with a bottle of this with a buddy and see if you can't make it go away. That would be a big mistake. <laughs> This is one to have a couple of pours of and move on to something else. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Well, Jim, man, a great review. I, this is a buy for me. If I see it at sixty nine ninety nine, you can guarantee you, you're going to see a bottle in my hand, Jim. Absolutely. Well, fortunately for us, we didn't have to buy this bottle. Thank you, Heaven Hill, for mailing it out to us. It, it's always been, uh, it's always been our habit to hunt the barrel proof bottles and get one every time. But it looks like we don't have to do that anymore, Mike. It looks like Heaven Hill's <laughs> happy to send us one. So thank you again to Heaven Hill for sending it. It certainly doesn't change our opinion of the bottle. We always talk truthfully about what we have on the show, but we certainly appreciate uh, not having to go out and find it this time. Thank you. Well, Jim, where can people find us on the Internet? Well, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. You can even find us on TikTok. But probably the best place to find us is on our private Facebook group called The Bourbon Roadies. We'd love to have you come and check it out and join the group. It's a place where like-minded people uh, like to chat about the whiskeys they're drinking, share pictures, share bottles. Uh, We certainly don't allow any selling on there, but we do love to get together and drink each other's whiskey, don't we, Mike? That that's the God's honest truth, and we're we're fixing to be at an event jim uh, where our roadies can drink with us we're gonna be at the kentucky bourbon festival this weekend i'm ex- i'm excited jim are you excited i'm very excited actually i didn't get to go last year mike but i did come back from puerto rico and have to listen to all the wonderful stories that you <laughs> that you told about being there and uh i'm i'm really excited this year we uh we both have vip passes so we're going to be bouncing around having a great time attending as much of the goings ons as possible. Hope to see a lot of roadies out there. Hope to hope to see a lot of listeners in general. If you're going to be anywhere near Bardstown, Kentucky, this coming weekend, make sure you get out to the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. Just go to the Kentucky Bourbon Festival dot com and buy yourself a pass. Come out and enjoy the day. Yeah, listeners. <clears throat> like Jim said, we're going to be out there. I'll have a backpack with me. Inside the backpack, we might have some stuff to give away, but we also will have our recorder with us. Um, we'd always like to make an episode out of our visits to these festivals. Um, so if you'd like to get on the show, come up to me, talk to me, who tell you who you are. If you're wearing a bourbon bullshitter t-shirt or a bourbon road shirt, uh, then we don't even have to ask. I'm just going to get that backpack out and we'll start recording. Ain't that right, Jim? That's right. That'll be pretty awesome, Mike. I can't wait to see it happen. Never, never fails that we run into some roadies out there and uh, have some great conversation and share a few pours. In the, in the case of the Kentucky Bourbon Festival, the bourbon's going to be flowing everywhere. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, every week we do two shows. We do a Craft Distillery Monday episode, like today's episode, where we kind of focus in on one expression from a craft distillery. Now, I know... Heaven Hill's not exactly a craft distillery putting out 1,300 plus barrels a day, but Mike and I did want to highlight the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof edition from this fall. So uh, it did make it in the show. And I hope you appreciate it. I hope you liked our tasting notes on it. But every Wednesday, we do a full length episode where we'll have a guest on, 
We'll drink through a couple of expressions. We'll deep dive a topic sometimes. Anyway, it'll be a full hour, two 30-minute hassle. We'll get you to work and get you home. But every week, two episodes. And, Mike, what do they have to do not to miss one? The listeners, you want to scroll on up to the top of that app, hit that check sign, that plus sign, that subscribe sign. The app's going to tell you, hey, these two jokers have an episode out today, and you need to listen to it. Once you listen to it, we want you to scroll on down to the bottom of that app, hit that five-star review, leave us some comments, because you know what's going to happen if you don't. The big bad booty daddy of bourbon is going to come to your house with this Elijah Craig barrel proof. We're going to drink it all night long. We're going to make it a session for sure. By the end of the night, you're going to give us that five-star review and some comments. But seriously, those comments, those reviews open up doors to distilleries. It gets great whiskey in our hands like this Elijah Craig Barrel Proof C922. We really do appreciate it. Now, Mike and I are very approachable, and you'll see us out and about. You'll see us at distilleries. You'll see us at events, like Mike mentioned earlier. You'll see us at liquor stores. Heck, you might even run into us at Walmart. You never know. But when you do run into us, make sure you step up and introduce yourself. Shake our hand. Let us know that uh, you've listened to the show. We love to hear that. Mike and I got egos as big as the world. We love to hear that, don't we, Mike? (laughs) Yes, sir. Yes, sir. (laughs) But uh, we'd love to meet you and hear your bourbon story, so make sure you reach out to us. You can always reach out to us online. We have a website, and on that website, it's called thebourbonroad.com. We've got a Contact Us page. You can always go there and shoot us a note, uh, ask us a question, send us a recommendation for a show or a bottle. We get them all the time. So you wouldn't be just the first person to do it. We get them all the time. We get people sending us emails. That I'm Jim at the bourbon road.com. He's Mike at the bourbon road.com. We always respond. We're very approachable. Mike and I love our listeners. We love our roadies and we're always eager and waiting to talk with you in person. So make sure you reach out to us. But like we always say, probably the best way to reach out to us, help our DMS on Instagram. I'm Jay Shannon 63. I'm Big Bourbon Chief, and we'll see you down the Bourbon Road. Bourbon Road.